I titled our mind map today, Your Authentic Self-Image. On the self-actualization journey, the combination of meditation, making flow a priority, and cause and effect reflection, discovering the relationship of my self-image in relation to the different aspects of my life, how I relate to others, how others relate to me, how I relate to my career, my profession, my entrepreneurial journey, and connecting it back to certain subconscious ideas that I hold of myself, understanding them, and then going on a journey of discovering what do I really love, what am I really interested in, and releasing from the identification of aspects or ideas of how I am not, to allow the authentic aspects of how I am to form my self-image. This has been the essence of the journey for realizing goals, visions, and the essence of what I communicate all throughout these videos. So today we discussed the self-image. We related over to the spiritual alchemy process. And before we do that, let's look at this definition here of self-image. Self-image is the personal view or mental picture that we have of ourselves. So if a person sees themselves as a self-confident person, they will experience that in their relationships, in their interactions with others, in the daily activities that they do. They would be going about doing things in, as we discussed in Tuesday's video, from the premise of the certain way, as in living with certainty, as I make reference to The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles. If you haven't watched that video, I recommend watching it. Now, if a person has challenges doing this, then perhaps these three insights that I pulled from some of my readings of James Allen's work, which we're going to infuse in our discussion, can be very helpful when it comes to maintaining the pathway of faith or certainty, living from our authentic self-image, which then we notice as a result, everything happens effortlessly and automatically. When a person lives how they truly desire to live, when they have discovered within themselves how they truly want to live and they clearly identify with that, as a mental picture of how they see themselves to be. Everything in their life changes, and they discovered within themselves the authentic aspects of how they truly are, how they see themselves to live, the kind of lifestyle they want to live, the kind of relationships they want to have, and how they relate to the different aspects of life in all areas of their life, such as career, financial, spiritual, physical, social, family, intellectual. Let's reflect upon some of my notes here from James Allen's work and weave it into our discussion. What we are, so is our world. Everything in the universe is resolved into our inward experience. Number two, it matters everything what we are within, for everything without will be mirrored and colored accordingly. Number three, all that is positively known is contained in experience. All that we ever will know passes through the gateway of experience. Or as I say sometimes in the videos, what we unconsciously say I am too. We have the opportunity to reveal. And so early childhood can have a major influence on our self-image. How we relate to information, how we relate to experiences, how we have interpreted the conclusions that we have formed within in relation to experiences, such as I'm a person of self-confidence or I'm a person of uncertainty. Number two, the image we see in the mirror may be an authentic or inauthentic view of who we deeply know ourselves to be. And so one of the things is that when we look in the mirror, 
and we accept, love, and appreciate what we see, it is said that this person who does that has a healthy self-image. They actually recognize the attributes that are distinct to them. And they look upon themselves from the perspective of self-appreciation. And they navigate existence from this premise. And what's interesting about this is others around them seem to also represent that in experience. Everywhere they go, they're accepted. People see them with high regard. People listen to them. They feel understood. From this authentic self-image, life is automatically expressed as an effortless, flow-based way of being. Number three, as we navigate information, we reveal our self-image. This could be information in conversation with others, information that we read in books, videos that we watch, any kind of information. And the five sensory experience can be seen as information. And our relationship inwardly of how we see ourselves in relation to that information is what is revealing our self-image. So that's what I mean by cause and effect reflection. How do I react? How do I respond? How do I interpret? How do I perceive? How do I assume in relation to? How do I believe consciously and subconsciously in relation to? Any information. What is it saying about myself? Do I feel a natural calm, ease, certainty? to higher degrees each day. That's how I know I'm actualizing my authentic self-image. Or does it feel like I am walking on eggshells? I, for whatever the reason, am not allowing myself to be how I really want to be. Say what I really want to say. Live how I really want to live. Have the kind of prosperity as we spoke about in Tuesday's video. See, it's up to us to determine what prosperity means. It's also up to us to determine what this authentic self-image means. And here are some ways that we can discover this. So I'm going to talk about six ways. And I would like to also tie this into the seven stages of the spiritual alchemy process, which I've discussed a few times. I'll put a link in the description to those discussions. And these six ways have been the ways that I have found within myself to discover my authentic self-image and live from the premise and as a result, experience certainty, confidence, ease, flow. And there were times on the journey where I applied this information, what's being discussed in this video, with a deeper degree of presence and appreciation, applying, as mentioned, meditation. And I've been meditating since 2008. I find that meditation helps me reveal my identification with thinking patterns, beliefs, that I've been identifying with, for whatever the reason may be, which are inauthentic. And each person discovers within themselves what that means to them, what is authentic, what is inauthentic. As I have found that through the inward, traveling in my imagination, having inner dialogues with myself, I discovered these attributes. And a 20-minute meditation, Vipassana style, is what I do every day. There are many more benefits for meditation in regards to our conversation it has helped me recognize based on my reactivity tension resistance or other indications identification with thought processes emotional patterns behavioral patterns in which through reflection cause and effect reflection i recognize that i am not being how i truly desire to be Number two, I mentioned making flow a priority. So one of the benefits of making flow a priority, I recommend watching my flow series, is that a person navigates life through a lighthearted way of being. It's easier for them to recognize when they are identifying with certain thinking patterns, emotional patterns, behavioral patterns that are not authentic to how they are. As well as while they're in flow, they discover Ideas, hunches, intuitive inner dialogues reveal how they truly want to represent themselves, 
They may get flashes in their mind's eye. We discover these things while we're in flow. I mentioned snowboarding and a number of things that I do to experience flow, including my entrepreneurial activities. I set up my entrepreneurial life, automated, delegated, eliminated, and optimized so that I would focus exclusively on that which encourages my flow. And as a result of doing this, I discover so many things about myself that are true and authentic to how I am. And then I integrate this via self-talk, auto-suggestion, being in environments that encourage certain behavioral patterns, emotional patterns, thinking patterns, so that through the repetition of that same information and the repetition of that same information from different perspectives, that becomes, or we could say reveals, my authentic self-image. I feel at ease. I feel calm. I feel at peace. And I notice my progress in the different skills that I would like to cultivate, in my entrepreneurial endeavors, in anything that I consciously put my mind to, the progress increases, as in I experience results faster. And this is one of the reasons why I love mind mapping. Those of you that are students of my mind map program know that I mentioned that this is my style of learning, which I've taught to many who have found it to be very helpful. And it's a flow-based style of learning. I also tend to use different learning and teaching modalities and integrate it into my learning. And I remember when I was in school, in grade school and high school, I had challenges learning in the way that I was taught to learn. I felt it was overly structured, too linear, too robotic. And I wanted something that was more authentic to how I know myself to be. And that's when I discovered mind mapping and different kinds of learning and teaching modalities. And so I experience flow when I learn. And again, through making flow a priority. And also cause and effect reflection, which is essentially what I'm doing with you right now. As we're reflecting, we're going through experiences in whatever we're doing, in our relationships, business life, personal life, all areas of our life. And we're asking the question, what is our self-image revealing? Do we feel calm, confident, at peace and ease? Or do we feel unnecessary frustration, stress, shame? Important things to keep in consideration. So what I found to be really helpful are these six ways that I've put together, which can be very helpful for you, which had helped me identify aspects of my self-image that I was identifying with that was not true to how I know myself to be, intuitively so, and also identify attributes, ways of doing things, ways of life in all areas of my life, including learning as mentioned in the example, so that I could encourage those ways of being. And as a result of forming this authentic self-image, I experienced, as we talk about in Tuesday's video, the way of certainty and life experiences that feel more flow-based, effortless, fun, joyous. Number one, define measurable visions and goals. Every time I set a goal or a vision, I'm on the journey to realizing that which I'm unconsciously identifying with, and that which is authentic that I identify with to represent my authentic self-image and express in what I do, goals, visions, realize, the self-actualization. Number two, take a self-image inventory. So we'll talk about how to do this via the seven stages of the spiritual alchemy process. Number three, acknowledge the realizations you have made. And what I always like to do is acknowledge how far we have come along on this journey. As we continue to encourage and acknowledge the progress that we've made in the different areas of our life, celebrating our successes, looking at the changes that have occurred as a result of working with this information. It further encourages at a subconscious level, a level of astuteness and higher degrees of ability to recognize when we are not being authentic and reveal what is authentic within via our intuition and inner voice. So we can associate with those attributes in relationship with our authentic self-image. Number four, discover your inherent abilities. When I look back at my life and earlier stages of the journey in childhood, teenage years, I've shared many experiences all throughout the videos. There were different characteristics, different skills, different attributes, different desires that are authentic to how I am, which through certain experiences in my life and forming conclusions, I suppressed 
And as I continued encouraging the meditations, making flow a priority, and cause and effect reflection, I discovered that these attributes were always there. And this may be the case for you. And I found this to be the case with many that I've spoken with. At a certain stage of their life, they released from holding themselves back from being how they truly want to be. And they acknowledged and they encouraged these abilities. And a lot of them turn these areas into professions, entrepreneurial successes, services that they provide to others, and or doing the things that they really love to do because they love to do it, which further encourages that authentic self-image. Number five, release comparison and perfectionism we want to recognize our individualized journey and individualized path. And although there are many ways of doing things, many ways of living, if a person commits to finding within themselves how they truly want to live and encouraging that in the self-image, it may have similarities to others or it may be very distinct, perhaps a combination. And as always, the answers are found within. Number six, encourage your distinction your ways of doing things, how you truly want to live, the pathway of discovering and living your authentic self-image is one where you embrace your distinction. We have great joy, happiness, and bliss in being how we truly know ourselves to be. So let's relate this over to the seven stages of spiritual alchemy. And I find that there's many interpretations and many ways of working with the spiritual alchemy process. And what I share in these videos are the ways that I have found that work extremely well for me and I trust that there's some parallels to your way of going through this spiritual alchemy process. So what I find is if I go back to these six areas here, they're all infused in the spiritual alchemy process. I always like to start with a goal or vision because I recognize that when I commit to a goal or a vision, a definite chief aim, something that a lot of times is a combination of what excites me and scares me brings about fears, doubts, and indecision so that I can make peace with them. When I commit to those goals, I recognize very distinctly that the spiritual alchemy process is occurring. Number one, calcination. This is where we start to release self-doubt. Self-doubt is brought to the surface or anything in relation to. Cause and effect reflection. Write down the attributes of self-doubt, whatever they may be. I don't believe I'll achieve success. Other people have never done this before. Whatever it may be, write it down. Cause and effect reflection. Put it in your journal. As you incorporate meditation, and I do 20 minutes a day, you'll notice it's easier to identify these self-doubt attributes and release from them. As you make flow a priority, it's also easier to identify these self-doubt attributes and note them. It's also easier to identify the true and accurate way of relating to experience, which is from the perspective of I can it is possible. I will achieve it. Number two, dissolution. In this phase, inner resistance elements are brought forth for purification. So this is a journey of purification of the mind. The mind has infinite powers. The infinite world of imagination can be explored through mind. And all artistic expressions, inventions, innovations already exist in imagination. And we discover it by allowing ourselves, being safe in mind, allowing ourselves to be able to explore, which is one of the reasons why I value having a goal or vision on the entrepreneurial path. Because on the pathway to creating success, you discover invention, innovation, different ways to optimize, delegate, automate, eliminate, in part or in whole or in combination. And so the inner resistance elements, thought processes are brought forth to the surface. We write them down again whatever they may be. I'm procrastinating. I'm having a hard time seeing things into completion. It's important that to not shame or condemn ourselves. Recognize that if they're not true to how you are, these are attributes that you're releasing from and you shall discover as you go down the spiritual alchemy process, which is on the journey to realizing your goal and your vision, which could be this video here, could be the various books that you read, the conversations that you have, the life experiences, Insights, perspectives, ideas, hunches, and inspiration show up on the journey upon surrendering to that vision realized, as I refer to in the videos. Number three, separation. What is authentic and true to you? How do you really want to be? 
So you start to distinguish. You say, this is true to me. These attributes of the self-image, self-confidence. I see myself in flow when I'm in conversations with others. I find it easier to express myself. And perhaps you see as you look at your notes, some of the attributes that were revealed. I'm afraid people will judge me. I feel shame when I do this. And now you can clearly distinguish what is authentic and true to how you are. Number four, conjunction. So this is where you can use the subconscious mind modalities. Are you self-talk, auto-suggestion, revision, and environment? If you're a student of my subconscious mind program, I focus on these areas. To accept and integrate the parts into your self-image. As we integrate these parts, which are true and authentic to how we are. This entire journey and what I encourage all throughout these videos is encouraging the authentic self-image and self-actualization. As we discover these attributes, we integrate with them. We accept these parts of ourselves. Full acceptance. I accept myself to be. I accept myself to be the person who speaks with congruence on topics that are of interest to me. Number five, fermentation. Here's where we develop a connection to the inner voice while detaching from certain programming identifications. So the way I like to look at it is there's mental chatter, overthinking, and then there's the true and authentic inner voice of how I actually am, which reveals the distinct ways via intuition of how to live, how to be, how to go about doing things. I've heard many people refer to this in many different ways. Conversations with their higher self, holy guardian and angel, receiving downloads. Number six, distillation. We integrate to a deeper degree the inner realizations into our lives. And by the way, I also recommend watching The Hero's Journey. We'll see the parallels, the video I did on The Hero's Journey, the one that I titled The Cave We Fear to Enter Holds the Treasure We Seek, which I found to be true. So one of the things that I like to do is to have goals that are fearful, challenging goals. In the earlier stages of my journey, in my childhood, there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of adversity and extreme challenge. It was during those times where I actually befriended the fear. I realized that fear and resistance, as discussed in The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield, which is a wonderful book, propels me forward, encouraged me to change my life, encouraged me to discover how I truly am, and encourage release from the shame, insecurity, different programming that I identified with for whatever the reason may be, which formed the self-image. And again, this is individualized, so it's important to recognize what are those things for us? So in distillation, we integrate these realizations to deeper degrees. They become the self-image. You notice you're automatically thinking, emotionally relating, and behaving more so than ever before in the way that feels authentic to how you are. We can also say heart and mind relationship, heart and mind coherence. We actually find love and flow and prioritize those areas automatically in all areas of our life. And number seven, coagulation. This is where we experience one with the divine. Inner and outer worlds are not seen as different or conflict with each other, rather as reflections. As we go back to the beginning here, inspired by James Allen, what we are, so is our world. Everything in the universe is resolved into our inward experience. It matters everything, what we are within. For everything without will be mirrored and colored accordingly. All that is positively known is contained in experience. Another reason why I mention I value the journey and the destination. You set a goal, a vision. We apply through presence and awareness these areas. And we value the spiritual alchemy process, which happens on the journey to realizing our goals and our vision. And so again, to recap, I found it was important to integrate meditation 20 minutes a day as it helped me recognize if I was identifying with certain thinking patterns, emotional patterns, behavioral patterns that were not true and authentic to how I know myself to be. It became easier over the years. Number two, by making flow a priority, it's easier to identify the self-doubt, internal resistance, thinking patterns, subconscious beliefs and patterns to make peace with them by working with the power of the subconscious mind. And also we make a lot of progress. We have a lot more fun and we find that we're being a lot more effective while we're in flow. And what I also discovered upon connecting the dots looking backwards is that by being in flow, I was also indirectly encouraging the authentic self-image. Number three, cause and effect reflection. What are the effects 
which reveal the self-image in the different areas of our life. I recommend reading the book Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. He discusses the self-image in vivid detail. And so we discover through the reflections, through the different experiences, that which we are unconsciously saying I am too. Each person recognizes within themselves is not authentic to how they are. And they discover within or inspiration in relationship with others, the attributes of how they truly are. And they can work with subconscious mind modalities to further integrate it. As mentioned that I work with self-talk, revision, subconscious mind audios. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and encourage this with an auto suggestion. We can say committing to the vision, the opportunity presents itself to reveal aspects of myself that are authentic and true to me, to accept, integrate, and represent as I feel it, going about doing things in the certain way, the way of faith, the way of confidence, easier each day, effortless, flow-based, as I deepen my connection to intuition and inner voice. Through this way of being, the authentic self-image, one with the higher self, represents the way I live. As I go about the day-to-day -day journey of further encouraging the inherent abilities, desires, and attributes of what are true and resonant to I am with how I am, I feel experientially a higher degree of oneness of the physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.